With the upcoming release of Neon Genesis Evangelion on Netflix, I decided now was a good time as any to talk about how you should watch Evangelion. Evangelion is one of the most influential anime of all time and is incredibly popular, spanning an entire 26th episode TV series, 5 theatrical films, and an entire manga series, as well as having its own personal store in Japan known as the Evangelion store. When it comes to Evangelion, the first thing you need to understand is that there's the original TV series and the movies that followed it, and then there are the movies known as the Rebuild film. The Rebuilds are a different version of the original TV series told in the form of theatrical films, and should if desired to be watched after you watch the original series as they condense down and cut out a lot of stuff from the original, and they're also generally not considered as good as the original TV series. The rebuild should really be the last thing you watch. You should just get around to watching them after you're done with the series. Now, the obvious place to start is with the original 26th episode TV series. You can start on episode 1 and watch up until episode 24, where things become quite confusing, and what you should do at this point is something that many fans will give you various answers for. And this is where we get to the topic of Evangelion, Death and Rebirth, and End of Evangelion. These theatrical films were created due to fans being unsatisfied with the ending of the original 26th episode TV series. Their purpose was to flesh out the ending in a way they could not do in the TV series, using the format of film. That is honestly the best way I can describe their purpose without spoiling the ending of the original TV series, so I'm not going to go much more into why they exist, but it is very fascinating, so I would definitely look into it after you're done watching the series and the movie. Death and Rebirth is a really strange movie. The first part of Death and Rebirth is called Death, and it's a 57 long minute edit of the first 24 episodes of the series. It's basically a recap movie. Now, if you think that is a little weird, get a load of this. The second part of the film, Rebirth, consists of the only original animation in the film that is just the first 27 minutes of End of Evangelion. Because of this, if you've just come off the heels of watching the TV series, I would honestly just recommend jumping right into End of Evangelion, as all the new stuff from Rebirth is in the first 27 minutes of End of Evangelion anyway. Now, my recommendation would be watching the entirety of the original TV series and then watching End of Evangelion. So watch episode 1 to 26 of the original series and then watch End of Evangelion. Now, that is the order in which you should watch Evangelion. Obviously, once you've seen End of Evangelion, if you would like to, you can go jump into the Rebuild film. While I don't like the Rebuild nearly as much, as the original series and End of Evangelion, they are worth watching as an extra thing once you've finished the TV series. Currently, there are three rebuild films available to watch, and the next one is in production at the moment, but we do not know if release date yet. But now that we've talked about the order in which you can watch the content, I think I would like to give you a few warnings or recommendations. After you're done watching the TV series and have watched episode 26, I do not recommend jumping right into End of Evangelion because I think it will sour the experience. I cannot explain why without spoiling it, but I believe to truly enjoy the experience that is End of Evangelion, you should probably wait a day or two. For me personally, I waited a week before I watched End of Evangelion. As for the manga, the anime is not an adaptation of the manga. The manga is actually an adaptation of the anime. So the manga is also different. It's not a direct adaptation. It changes things and has tells a slightly different story. So like the Rebuild films, it's really just a fun thing to check out after you're done with End of Evangelion and the TV series. After you're done with the series, there's also a ton of great fan content out there, such as the Evangelion Dojinshi, retake, which is fantastic, as well as some actually pretty damn good fan fiction out there. As with any theory, there's a lot of bad ones, but there's a couple of Evangelion fan fits that actually stand out as pretty good. So when it comes to Evangelion, there's definitely plenty of content, but above all else, I hope this video helped to prepare you for when you first watch Neon Genesis Evangelion. 
But of course, the way I list it is just a preference. Some other fans may recommend you something else because there are other ways you could watch it. I'm only recommending you what I think is the most enjoyable way to consume Evangelion. But guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave it a like. If you're someone that's looking to start the series when it premieres on Netflix, please tell me down below what your expectations for Ava are based on what you know about it, what you think it's going to be like, what you think is going to happen. I'm very interested in what your pre Evangelion viewing thoughts are. And if you're a long-time Ava fan, tell me what you thought of the recommendation I gave in this video. That I think how to watch Evangelion is a very interesting conversation that I would love to have. If you enjoyed the video and you're an Evangelion fan and you want more Ava content, I do cover Ava quite a bit on this channel. I really like talking about it. So if you want to see Ava videos, you should definitely subscribe. But above all else, guys, have a great day.